All right, so I am new to Cisco ACI. I had known what it was. I had kind of um, looked at it a little bit before, but this was my first time really kind of getting in there and uh, getting my hands dirty, I guess, so to speak. Uh, it is Cisco's software-defined networking controller. It gives you the ability to add uh, network infrastructure in and will be auto-discovered and then auto-configured based on policies you put in place. It's actually pretty cool. Um, it develops the underlay and overlay networks, so it goes in there and in, configures ISIS and then does VXLAN to connect all of the, um, the uh, spine and leaf switches together. It's interesting because uh, it's routed all the way down to the edge, so if you want two things to be on kind of the same subnet, then it will uh, automatically do the, uh, the VXLAN configuration, so it kind of takes all that heavy lifting off. I think it even locks you out of touching those portions of the configuration. So if you, like me, want to automate and start playing with it and really get in there uh, without breaking your existing ACI infrastructure, or if you're just uh, looking at using ACI or you have an existing ACI, um, but you know you want to test a few different new things, whatever it happens to be, um, Cisco and their developer.cisco.com, you know, their DevNet section, uh, using your regular Cisco login, you can pop in there and get access to some infrastructure. So I'm going to click um, Sandbox Collection, or rather Sandbox Catalog here. And right at the top, here's our ACI infrastructure. So you have ACI Simulator. So you can reserve an ACI Simulator, which means it's going to be dedicated to you, and other people aren't going to be in there breaking it. Or you can just go for the always on, which is the option I went with, which means there's other people in there messing around. So keep in mind that this is a shared environment. So um, there's a lot of people hitting it. They give it limited resources. So it does run a little bit slow. Um, but aside from that, it's got pretty much everything you need in there to start playing with. So I think it's got one spine switch, two leaf switches already in there in the infrastructure, and you can kind of get wild. So one thing of note is don't break it if you didn't put it in there so if there's some infrastructure in there that you didn't create don't remove it because other people are probably testing and uh, you might break what they're doing so I wrote a playbook that I am going to be calling from tower that's going to be creating a tenant then an app profile then a VRF then a domain rather a bridge domain and then 10 EPGs associated with all of that I um, again I've never really used this so I don't know what like What's the killer integration piece people are looking for from an automation perspective? So for me, I just, you know, picked something that seemed like it was tedious to do. While I'm only creating 10, imagine I was doing 100. And this completes in about a minute on an extremely slow environment. So if I was doing 100 in a standard environment, it would probably complete in like 30 seconds. Right? So it gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of power. And through the tower interface, you get all that governance piece. You can dictate who gets to do what, when, where, and how. So in here, in the, uh, the Cisco ACI modules, there's uh, a handful of things that are common. So in the sandbox environment, it will give you the IP address. And this is what the module wants for the host. It wants an IP address or a domain name, whatever it happens to be, username and password to log into all of those systems with. If you look down here, you can see the standard one. They all use that same bit of information and variableizing it makes it very easy to go through. Also, in the sandbox environment, you want to turn off certificate validation. So validate certs, false. Otherwise, you're gonna have problems connecting to the ACI system. So I also variableized my tenant, AP name, bridge, and all that stuff. Uh, what I'm doing here with my EPGs is I'm creating a list of what I want to loop through in the final task, right? Loop, and then I'm doing loop control just to make the variable name look a little bit easier. So that's something you can examine if you are new to loops. I've also got a blog post up uh, that's um, my Ansible Omnibus that talks about loops and other things like that, and I'm constantly adding to it. So if you're curious about that, pop in and take a look. So I'm gonna start out by going to Tower. Here is my um, job template. So uh, again, I make all my GitHub repos public, so you can just grab that, and in Tower, you add it as a project. Once it's a project, then it shows up in templates. So for that username, password, and the system name, I actually created a custom credential, credential type, and in my Zabbix, uh, integrating with Ansible, 
uh, blog post, I actually talk about creating custom credentials. So I created one for Cisco ACI, created the credentials, and then in the job template, I created here for the Cisco ACI, I associated those custom credentials. So it passes all that stuff over. And in the custom credentials, you can specify uh, the password to be private. Uh, really, you can specify all that information. And then at runtime, it actually keeps all of that hidden away so it's not logging the passwords. It also keeps it encrypted in the system, which keeps it safer. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this job. <clears throat> Again, it's a little bit slow. But you can see it starting up, reaching out. So it should go out and create the tenant. I'll watch it at least that far. So change. So it actually did reach out and make that change. So it's slowly going to be stepping through all the various pieces and creating them. So I'm going to come over here to uh, the APIC interface, this demo one. And as you can see, it's actually going across multiple pages. So it's unlikely I will see mine. It is named gtest. So let me do a quick search. And sure enough, again, this is going to be running a little bit slow. You can see it's only got uh, two EPGs right now. So it's only gone through two of the 10. It's almost complete though. So I should be able to start looking at what actually exists. So I can go to application profiles. Here's the uh, gtest application that was created. Application EPGs, you can see them pop in as they actually get created, the different ones. Um, I also created under networking, I created a bridge domain. Come on, open up. There's my gtest bridge. Here's my VRF that I created. gtest VRF. Let's see, did it actually complete? Yes, it completed. So another really interesting thing about um, these ACI modules uh, within Ansible is that they are item potent. And uh, what that means is I can rerun the exact same task. It will evaluate everything. So it'll say, hey, based on this playbook, the configuration files, whatever it happens to be, if I need to make a change, I will. If I don't, if it's in the desired state that I specify in my files, leave it be. So before, you remember it said orange, or rather it was orange and it said changed. Now it's saying OK, right? OK means uh, while this task completed successfully, it didn't actually need to make a change. So it's just going to run through the list and not actually make any changes to any of that environment. So as you can see, it's very simple to integrate uh, any kind of changes required in um, Cisco ACI via Ansible. So again, I don't know what the killer use case is for this. If you guys could please let me know. I'm very curious. I want to build some playbooks that actually speak to you guys that do the things you want it to do. Um, maybe you can uh, rinse and repeat my code. Uh, something a sales professional told me one time is um, don't reinvent the wheel, steal it. So it's already there, grab it from somebody else. So please use my code. Thank you guys. Questions, comments, please keep them coming and see you next time.